Hey everyone, welcome to another study. So for this study, we're going to be continuing to look at the daughters of Job. I hope you've prayed for the Spirit of Christ to lead you, and you've got your Bibles open. So now let's go ahead and jump into our theme verses, Isaiah 37, 30. This shall be a sign to you. You shall eat this year, Jemima, such as grows of itself. The second year, Keziah, what springs from the same. Also in the third year, Karen Hapik, sow and reap, plant vineyards, and eat the fruit of them. And the remnant who have escaped out of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go a remnant, and those who escape from Mount Zion. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Now we'll move on to the second sister or church, and her name in Hebrew is Keziah or Cassia in Greek. So here we're talking about the time of the lion, 34 AD through approximately 1798. So we have the true Jewish followers of Christ are united together with the Gentiles. So that explains why we have the two names. So Keziah, the Jewish name, means scraped off or ended. And of course, this refers to some of the prophecies during that time period. We also have Cassia, which refers to the Cassia tree, which is talked about in scripture. It has fragrant seeds and bark similar to cinnamon, and this was part of the incense of the sanctuary. And we can read about that in Ezekiel chapter 30. Next, we'll go ahead and look at some of the verses that really summarize this time period. So Hebrews 7, 17, you are priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Jeremiah 8, verse 20, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. And that's exactly what pertained to the end of the 490-year prophecy. Acts 18 and verse 6, But when they opposed him and blasphemed, he shook his garments and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. And then Daniel 12, and we'll start in verse 7, Then I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left to heaven, swore by him who lives forever, that it shall be for a time's time and half a time. The 1260. And when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things will be finished. So now let's take a quick look at the prophetic markers associated with Keziah or Cassia. And of course, one of the biggest ones is 70 AD. We have judgment for the city of Jerusalem, and that occurred just under one generation. That would be 40 years. That would be from 34 AD. So that represents the tearing time. Daniel 9, 27, And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate even until the consummation or the total destruction, which is determined will be poured out on the desolate. And of course, we previously mentioned the times, time, and half a time, which is just 1260 years of persecution by the beast power. That is the treading down of the temple courts. And that occurred 538 through 1798. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who dwell there, but leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it is given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for forty-two months. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy one thousand two hundred and sixty days clothed in sackcloth. So now let's read a couple of witnesses about the end of the time period or the church of Keziah or Cassia. That occurred in 1798 when the beast power received the deadly wound by the pagan forces. So Revelation 13:2. Now the beast which I saw was a leopard, his feet like the feet of the bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. So the, this represents the amalgam beast, which is a matchup of all this different pagan idolatry. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of the heads as it had been mortally wounded. Zechariah one eighteen. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and there were four horns. Of course, the four horns are the four worldwide empires, Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, and Rome. That includes pagan and papal Rome. And I said to the angel who talked with me, what are these? So he said, these are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. Craftsmen are always shown in scripture as associated with pagan rites and idolatry. And I said, what are these coming to do? So he said, these are the horns that have scattered Judah so that no one could lift up his head. But the craftsmen are coming to terrify them, to cast out the horns of the nations that lifted up their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. So the final daughter of Job, the youngest, is Karen Hapik. So this church, I believe, runs from 1798 
to the end of the millennium, and that is where Jesus is going to destroy death and eternity starts. We also have during this time period the 144,000 being raised up. So the name Karen Hapik means horn with mascara to radiate with beautified eyes, a splendor of color, or the horn of antimony. So we have a lot of imagery here of the bride of Christ. Zechariah 9 16, the Lord their God will save them in that day as a flock of his people, for they shall be like the jewels of a crown lifted like a banner over his land, for how great its goodness and how great its beauty. Grain shall make the young men thrive and new wine the young women. Now let's read some additional verses on this time period. Micah 4 1, it shall come to pass in the latter days the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains, be exalted above the hills, people will flow to it. Many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Sion, not Mount Sinai, the law shall go forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Isaiah 28, 5, In that day the Lord of hosts will be for a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people. For a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment, and for strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. Isaiah 52, Awake, awake, put on strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no more come upon you. Revelation 7, 4, And I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. So then as we look at the prophetic markers for the time period of the church of Karen Hapik, we see that a lot of these do not have specific dates, even though the events are specified. But let's look at some that do have dates. And one of those that's very prominent is the 1843, the Church of Philadelphia, the 144,000 rising up. They have an open door into the sanctuary in heaven, and they are sealed. They go out of the sanctuary no more. We also have the book of Daniel being unsealed as well, Daniel standing up in his lot. Daniel 12, 12, blessed is he who waits. This is a blessing that would come in 1843 and comes to 1,335 days. But you go your way to the end, for you shall rest, and you will rise to your inheritance at the end of the days. The other prophetic marker that's very prominent here is, of course, is 1844, where Jesus is moving into the most holy place, the heavenly sanctuary. This is the anti-typical day of atonement at the end of the 2300-year prophecy. Daniel 8, 13, Then I heard a holy one speaking, another holy one said to the one that was speaking, How long shall the vision be concerning the daily, this is pagan Rome, and the transgression of desolation, this is papal Rome, the giving of both the sanctuary and the host to be trampled underfoot? And he said to me, For 2,300 days, then the sanctuary will be cleansed. So now, friends, a quick summary. There was quite a bit of information about these two daughters or churches that was presented. So we need to know biblically how this information can be sorted. Habakkuk 2, 1. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me, what I am answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tables, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but the end it will speak. It will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So here on the final slide, the information has been charted out in accordance with Habakkuk chapter 2. And I want to pay special attention to the final phase, which is the phase of Karen Hapik. We look at Ezekiel chapter 1 and chapter 10. We see that we are in the phase of Christ's ministry known as the eagle, which is the time of judgment. We look at Genesis chapter 2 we see we are in the time period of the river Euphrates. It's a river that is so deep, no one could cross it. So that is the Spirit of God being poured out without measure. Of course, again, we have the name Horn of Antimony, this idea of the beautiful Bride of Christ. When we look at the sanctuary, this aligns with the most holy place, which of course is where God dwells. So that is inherent with the idea of glorification. When we look at Ezekiel chapter 40, we are looking at the western gates of the city of the New Jerusalem, which is associated with three tribes, Gad, Asher, and Naphtali. We have the prophetic markers, the 144,000 rising up, the 1335 and the 2300 year prophecy. 
and the duration which runs from 1798 until the end of the millennium when Jesus destroys sin forever. And that is when eternity begins, and I pray that we will be able to study together for all eternity. Blessings to you in the name of Jesus.